Okay. So now let us do a chi-square test of independence. Now, we have previously talked about chi-square tests for goodness of fit. In that case, we were looking at one categorical variable and seeing does it follow a certain distribution. Here, with tests for independence, we're evaluating to see if we have two if the two categorical variables that we have are related to each other or not. Okay, so one case, one categorical variable compared it to a proposed or an expected distribution here. Now we're saying are, are two are two of these categorical variables related to each other? Well, it was, you know, we've done it was with, with quantitative variables simply and easily. Now we want to take that and look at two categorical variables. Like I said, marketing, politics, polling, huge in, in, in this. Okay. So we have a HOHA, six steps like we always do in our RHO, simply the two variables, name them, are independent. Two variables versus HA, two variables, not independent. Remember, mutually exclusive. So for instance, browser and operating system preference, they are independent. Or browser and operating system are not independent. Okay. Now we kind of suspect that they're probably related. I mean, let's face it, you buy the MacBook, you open it up, you got the Mac OS, turn it on, and everything is, you just run it in the whole Apple ecosystem for the rest of your life, right? You probably got Safari running. Contrast that with the Windows folks who can't get away from Edge or Internet Explorer fast enough, and we're installing Chrome and Firefox. It's like one of the first things that we ever do, not the Mac people. Whoa. So hmm, be interested to see how that, that shakes out. So essentially what we do, right, we, we, we gather up a whole bunch of, of, of data, and uh, we look at it. And we have our two categorical variables. Are they related to each other? And, and, and so on. Okay. Excel pivot tables, very, very useful in this regard. Okay. So we can use that an Excel pivot table to do the counting. We can also then use the results from that Excel pivot table to uh, derive uh, chi-squared, chi-test, or chi-squared test uh, variables as well as p-values. Okay, so a pivot table, very useful mechanism for, for doing this counting for us. Okay, a couple of uh, little uh, pieces of information to keep in mind. R is the number of rows corresponding to the number of categories of one of the variables. Let's call it the Y variable. Uh, C is the number of columns corresponding to the number of categories of the other variable. For now, we'll call it X. And the resulting cell frequency is called F, I, and J. Standard matrix protocol or matrices protocol is that the row is the first and the J or the second number is the number is the columns. Okay. So essentially we have a whole bunch of cells. Okay. Again, I is the row, J is the column. First number is the row, second number is the column. Standard stuff. Okay. So. Let's look at this. So we have a, a two-dimensional contingency table, and we kind of see for the first level of one of the variables, right? row, row one, column one, F11, one, one. row one, column two, F12, one, two. And, and so on. Right? So we have a very similar situation to what we had with the tests for goodness of fit. It just happens to be bigger. It's just more of this, okay? At the end of it all, we are essentially comparing what we got to what we would expect to get. Right? Standard, kind of our, our standard protocol, a standard way of thinking that we always have when we, we do testing. We have what we think we would get given a certain situation. We compare that to what we actually got. If that's close, then we got what we thought we did. If it's not, then we've got something different. So just a comparison process. Just like with the goodness of fit, we compared our actual frequencies, our observed frequencies, with what we'd expected to get. 
Now here, the expected values are a little bit different because remember, our HO is that they're independent. HA is that they're not. So we need to find our expected values as if they were independent. Well, if we think back again to our experiences in our first stats class. Well, how did we determine if two variables were independent, if we multiplied the two variables by themselves, we got the probability that you had A and B, for instance. Okay. So if A and B were independent, the probability of A and B, which is simply the probability of A times by the probability of B. And we knew that it, that particular simple calculation only applied if A and B were independent, which is what we're assuming in HO. So we do the same thing. Probability of a given value or given category in the x variable times by the probability of a given category of the y variable. Multiply those two probabilities together. You get the probability that you're both in that particular level of x and that particular level of y. Multiply it by n and you're back to that n times p calculation we had with the goodness of fit. And that's what we see here. That's what we see right there at the bottom of that slide. The ends cancel each other out. We make the math just a little sleeker. So we're just essentially looking at the, the number across a, a given row times by the number down a given column divided by n. And that's our expected value for that particular cell. Notice that we have can have many cells here, many observed values for each one of these cells. We will have an expected value for each and every one of those observed cells. More observed cells, the more expected um, value calculations. Okay. So keep that in mind. Not a tremendously hard, there's a bit of labor involved in this. And now, of course, we got a chi-square test statistic calculation. Same idea as we had with the goodness of fit. We are comparing what we observed to what we expected. And if those are close to each other, we're expecting a small chi-squared test statistic and hence a large p-value indicating that we would not be rejecting h naught. Or alternatively, if they're a lot different, a big chi-squared test statistic, itty bitty little p-value, and then we're likely to reject h naught, that there's no relationship. That, that they're independent. Now we got the big double sigmas and we got some extra subscripts and this thing looks all so scary and frightening and everything else like that. All it means that is for every single cell we do the calculation. Just means there's a lot of work to do. Not hard, observed, minus expected, square it, divided by expected. Now we've got the observed values, those come out of our data results, right? Comes from our surveys or wherever they came from. We must calculate the expected values for every single one of those, just like we did before. And then we must do this chi-square test statistic for every single cell. Then we sum them all up and we get the ultimate chi-squared value. Okay, so clearly step three, the calculation of this chi-squared test statistic is a little beefy, especially if you're doing it by hand. Doing it by Excel, which <clears throat> you will learn in the lab. And I will do a little quick example of this uh, in a different segment. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty easy. And of course, as we know, every chi-squared test statistic must have that other thing degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom calculation here is just the number of rows minus one multiplied by the number of columns minus one. So in brackets, R minus one times by, in brackets, C minus one. Well, we have our, our degrees of freedom. So we do the big calculation. And then if we're doing this by hand, well, step four, we look for the p-value. We look for the, the uh, p-value using the chi-square tables as we would normally, okay, no, nothing, nothing big there. Or we could use the, the chi-test function in Excel. 
and we'll show that how to do that in a in a different tutorial. Okay, so the p-value reflects the likelihood that HO is true, probability of um, the result clearly by chance, and of course, uh, the bigger that p-value is, less likely we are to reject H dot. Smaller the p-value is, more likely we are to reject H dot. A couple of things to keep in mind as we do this is the expected frequencies uh, must be greater than or equal to one for the test to be valid. This must be okay. So very similar to what we had with goodness of fit. Combine categories if they're too small. And as it was the case with goodness of fit, it's best if the average frequency is at least five. Okay. With Excel pivot tables, uh, observed frequency is zero. This results in an empty cell. Enter a zero as the observed frequency. Sometimes when you're using a chi test function, things may go awry if there's not an actual value in there. Okay, so now the chi test uh, test. P-value calculate, very simple. We have one function, two arguments. We compare the actual range or the observed values. And then our second argument is the expected range. And then that calculation for that chi-square test statistic, Excel does that for us. And then uses that in order to find the P-value. Okay, so to sum up, step one, HO, the two categorical variables, name them, give context to the problem, are independent versus the two categorical variables. And again, name them, are not independent. And step two is as usual. Step three, calculate the test statistic. Don't forget the degrees of freedom. Common mistake, very easy to do. Use the table or... Use Excel, find the p-value, make the decision, usual, the usual decision rule. And then the conclusion is the two variables, name them, please, are independent, or the two variables, whatever their names are, are not independent, right? Very, very simple thing. So I'll get start, get you started on a couple of, of, of examples, but I'll do the examples on a different clip using Excel. So the FBI compiles information on arrests for violent crimes by the type of crime committed and the age of the person arrested. We're going to test to see if age of the arrestee is independent of the alleged crime. The arrest information is on the following slide. And what do we see? We see murder, forcible rape, robbery, aggravated assault, and then a few age categories. Ah, look at that. Murder. 18 to 24 year olds. 11 murders. 25 to 44. As you get older, you kill more. What the hell's with that? Oh, and we got like for nice people like me, you know, over 45, we don't kill anybody. We don't rape anybody. We don't rob anybody. We don't do anything, actually. Just wait to die. We don't beat people up. Look at those 25 to 44s. Oh my gosh, we graduate from robbery and just start beating people up just to beat people up. Those 25 to 44s, I mean, uh, when they were 18 to 24, they were beating people up to rob them. Now they're just beating people up. They forgot what they were doing. So as we see, uh, looking at this data, we have all the observed frequencies, right? So we have four different crimes and we have three different age groups. So for each one of the crime type of crime and age group, we have an observed frequency, which means we will also have to find an expected frequency for each one of those. Okay. And all that requires us to do is if I want to know the expected value for murder uh, by 18 to 24 year olds, I just take the row total of 31, multiply by its respective column total of 322, and divide by the total total of 750. But I have to do that for every single one of those cells. Uh, it's a lot of labor if you're doing it by hand. Real easy if you're doing it by Excel, which we will see shortly. Okay. And again, six steps. Follow the six steps. When you're using Excel, step three and step four can be a little bit weird because you actually find step four first and then use it to step, find step three. But we want to make sure that we include both. Uh, so that somebody else can then go behind you 
and verify your results to make sure that they make sense and that there's nothing odd or a simple mistake there. Okay, so on a subsequent clip, you will see me do the crime data example and then this example here uh, related to sports drinks. The crime example is really easy to do on Excel. Would not expect anybody to do this by hand. Um, however, the other uh, example can be done easily by hand. It could be done easily uh, using Excel. It's always easy using Excel. Okay, thank you very much.